I'm back with scholar and author John Lott. Um, we're now going to talk about the issues of voter integrity. John, when you were in the um, in the U.S. government at the Department of Justice, you looked at some uh, voter fraud and voter integrity issues. Uh, I want to talk about some of your findings as you surveyed voter laws, not just in Europe, but also in, in other developed economies. We've been having this now critique from the left here in America that these voter integrity laws, and specifically voter ID laws, are, are racist, they're discriminatory, they're, as some people say, voter suppression laws. They make it harder to vote, they discourage minorities and people of color from voting. Uh, talk about what you found as you've taken, you've taken a look at this issue broadly and what's happening in other countries. Have, have they, are they familiar with similar issues and what, what conclusions have they come to? Sure, no, exactly. I mean, what you find is that uh, other countries have had the same type of debate that we've had in the United States. People realize that there's a trade-off between making it easier for people to vote and concerns about vote fraud. Uh, the amazing thing to me, though, in looking at other countries is how universally they've decided that it's important to have certain basic safeguards to try to prevent fraud in other countries. And it's been something that socialists and non-socialist governments have adopted. You've seen agreements between conservative parties and labor parties that are there on what to do. You look at Europe, for example, there are 47 countries in Europe, 46 of them require photo IDs, government issued photo IDs for people to go and vote. Uh, the 47th country, uh, the UK, uh, has required it for Northern England, Northern Ireland and parts of England. Uh, in local elections, but even they are changing. Uh, they've just introduced legislation a month ago, and probably within the next couple months, uh, all 47 countries will have the same rule. And you look across developed countries around the world, it's very similar. You look at something like absentee ballot rules. 75% of Europe bans absentee ballots for people living in their country. Uh, another 20% either limited to people who are in the military or the hospital, but all of them require that you have to have photo voter IDs to physically go and pick up the absentee ballot. They don't send it to you in the mail. Uh, so 95% of Europe has stricter rules for absentee ballots, either banning it or in terms of obtaining one than any of the states have in the United States. Let me read from your article. In some countries, even a driver's license is not considered authoritative enough as a form of voter ID. You say, for example, the Czech Republic requires a passport or a military-issued ID. Others go even further. Colombia and Mexico each require a biometric ID uh, to cast a ballot. Um, now, how is it the case that in those countries they don't consider these sorts of restrictions as a form of voter suppression? What what is their? Uh, how is it that they were able to convince the left in those countries? Hey, listen, it's more important to authenticate the vote than it is to say, oh, it's making it more difficult because someone's got to kind of take the trouble to go get an ID. Uh, how how is the debate stacked one way in those countries, and it appears to be stacking another way, at least with the left in this country? Right. I mean, you look at Mexico, all the political parties support voter IDs. I mean, and in Mexico, uh, they check not only your photo, but they check your thumbprint to make sure that uh, you are who you claim to be. Uh, you know, in Mexico, also, if you look at the claim about voter suppression, uh, their rules went into effect in 1991. They completely banned absentee ballots for even people living outside the country. Uh, they required uh, biometric photo IDs, as I mentioned, and you had to go in person twice. You had to go once to apply for it, and then again to go and pick it up. Uh, you would think with these rules, given the claims about suppression, you should have seen a big drop in voter turnout in Mexico. In fact, if you compare the th turnout in the three presidential elections after the vote rule changes with, with the three beforehand, there was a nine percentage point increase in the rate that people voted. And there's a simple reason for that. People had been concerned about fraud and that their votes didn't matter. And when those safeguards went into effect, people realized that it was much more likely that their votes would matter, so they turned out and voted. Uh, 
you know, you have seen that in other countries. Uh, European countries, despite all these additional restrictions, have had a much higher voter turnout rate than the United States has had. You mentioned a little detail, which I think to me may be the heart of the matter. You talk about the fact that in 1988, you had a leftist presidential candidate, Cardenas, who lost to Carlos Salinas de Gortari. And the left began to suspect that Gortari had had voter fraud uh, benefit him and put him over the top. So it seems to me when both sides are worried that the other side might do it to you, then they go, hey, listen, it's really important to have voter integrity. I think one of the reasons maybe it's more difficult in America is the left believes that voter, that easing these voter rules, mailing out these ballots en masse, benefits them every single time. And so since they view the process is beneficial to them, and they don't have to worry about Republicans cheating on mass in the election. Therefore, they go, hey, this is why we want the more liberalized laws, because they, they seem to guarantee better outcomes for our side. I think that's right. And, you know, the striking thing is just how al- alone the United States is in not having these types of rules to, to prevent fraud. Um, You know, you look at the debate with regard to Texas or Georgia that's been occurring recently. The big thing that Democrats have been upset about in Texas has been that they will, the new bill that they have would require that somebody has to be present with the voter box at all times. So they'll limit the time between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m. But they say you can't leave ballot boxes unattended. Uh, There's no country in the world that I can find that leaves ballot boxes unattended. They're very concerned about chain of custody type issues that are there. Uh, And yet uh, Biden and many other Democrats claim that the Republicans are racist because they don't want to leave a ballot box unattended at 3 a.m. in the morning out there. Uh, You know, the voter ID rules in Texas are less stringent than what will be true for all the countries in Europe. Uh, You know, and so it's just, anyway, go ahead. Well, I was saying the rhetoric just continues. Here's E.J. Dion in the Washington Post. He's talking about, uh, I'm quoting him now, Republican politicians have passed voter suppression measures, some of which read as if they were translated directly from the Russian or the Hungarian. So here's E.J. Dion indulging himself as though America is moving in a totalitarian direction or authoritarian direction simply by imposing the minimal requirements that you describe. Um, so what do you make of the, the temperature of this rhetoric and the sheer distortions that have now become a kind of commonplace feature of our media? I mean, you pick up the New York Times, they constantly referring to the Republicans as anti-democratic or authoritarian because of these rules, the same with the Washington Post and other places. You know, I tried writing letters to them, just pointing out, you know, letters to the editor saying, look, if you think that the Republicans are authoritarian because they support these types of rules, then all of Europe, you know, Sweden, France must be authoritarian countries because they have much stricter rules than anybody in the Republican Party is proposing here. I think that's the heart of the matter. Thank you, John Lott. Really appreciate your coming on to talk about these issues. Thank you very much. People can find more at our website at crimeresearch.org, crimeresearch.org. Thank you very much, Dennis. Awesome. Please check it out, guys. Uh, We'll be right back.